All right, welcome back. So today we're going to start uh, a lecture series on the numerical differentiation and numerical integration, okay? So let me just write this on the board. So numerical differentiation uh, is what we're gonna start with. Differentiation. Okay, and the idea is pretty simple. So we're going to be doing this either with a function or with data. Okay, so let's just say uh, given a function or this could be data f of t, then we're going to use our um, definition of the derivative. So what's a good definition of the derivative? I have df dt equals, what does df dt equal? Okay, so one good definition is the limit, um, the limit as delta t goes to zero of f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by delta t. Okay, so this is the definition of the derivative that we're used to seeing from calculus class. Um, we can draw a nice picture to illustrate what's going on here. Okay, so if we have f versus t, and we have some function, let's just pick a function. <coughs> Excuse me. If I wanna know the derivative at a point, right, so the derivative, kind of the geometric interpretation of the derivative is that it's the uh, slope of the line tangent to the curve, right, the tangent to the curve. So what we can do is we can look at the slope between two points that are very, very close to each other. Okay, and in the limit, as the second point becomes closer and closer to the first point, right, as delta t becomes zero, then this, is, this um, converges to the derivative or the slope of the tangent line, okay? Okay, good. Um, so numerical differentiation is going to rest on this formula where instead of taking the limit as delta t goes to zero, because numerically we can't really do that, right? If we took the limit as delta t goes to zero, um, we won't have anything to work with. So we're going to work with expressions like this using very, very small delta t's, okay? That's kind of the basis of, of what we're doing. Okay, and so we're going to take our function f of t plus delta t, and we're going to Taylor expand in terms of delta t. So we'll get f of t plus delta t, um, f prime or df dt evaluated at t plus delta t squared over two factorial times the second derivative d squared f dt squared at t plus, I'm gonna write the third term just uh, so that you see the pattern, delta t cubed over three factorial d cubed f dt cubed of t plus higher order terms, okay? And these higher order terms look like uh, order delta t to the fourth, okay? <coughs> now, some of you might not remember uh, Taylor series very well. How many of you kind of feel comfortable with Taylor series? Okay, so most of you should feel comfortable. Um, and if you don't, please, uh, please definitely go back through your calculus notes or your calculus book, um, do some problems and feel really comfortable with Taylor series again. We're going to use it uh, a lot at this point. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a little kind of mini refresher on Taylor series just because it's so important, okay? And then we'll get back to numerical differentiation. Taylor series, okay? This is just kind of an aside. Okay, so the idea with the Taylor series is, in general, we have some function, and we know the value of that function at some point, and we know all of the derivatives at that point, and we want to approximate the function at nearby points. 
Okay, so I'm just going to work out uh, an example. So let's see. So first I'm just going to say in general. In general, uh, f of x plus delta x is Taylor expanded. about x, and I'm going to write down the formula. So we have, um, let's see, we have f of x plus delta x equals f of x plus delta x df dx plus delta x squared over 2 factorial d squared f dx squared plus dot 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 order delta x cubed. Okay, this is the Taylor series. This is essentially what we just wrote down uh, on the other board. Okay, and so what we like to think about, um, essentially we, are, we know f and all of its derivatives at a point x, and we want to approximate the function at a nearby point x plus delta x. I say nearby because this approximation, if we just, if we stop here, this approximation is only going to be good in some radius uh, around our base point. Okay, there's kind of another way of writing this. Um, this, is, this is fine, but we could also expand, um, so we could expand um, f of x about a point A. <coughs> Okay, I'm just writing this in different ways so you get comfortable with the kind of different um, notations that I might use later on, okay? So if we want to expand f of x about a point A, then A is our base point where we know f and all of its derivatives. And x minus A is my difference from that base point, okay? So I have uh, f of x would then be approximately equal to f evaluated at my base point A plus uh, my derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at A times my delta x, which is x minus A. Okay, plus, uh, and then I get my second derivative term. Let's see, d squared f d x squared at A times x minus a squared over 2 factorial plus order delta x cubed, okay? So please convince yourself that these two are kind of equivalent ways of writing the same thing. Um, I have a base point. In this upper equation, my base point is x. I'm just going to underline that. Um, in the lower equation, my base point is a, okay? And I'm Taylor expanding about some nearby point. Okay, so here we assume that x is near a, and so x minus a is relatively small. Okay, good. Um, so this is kind of just the general theory of Taylor expansion. Um, and there's a lot of great theorems you can prove about Taylor expansion, and you can really convince yourself that this will be a faithful approximation to my function, uh, at least in some radius of the point a. Okay, so I want to do just a quick example. So my example is f of x equals sine of x, and I'm going to Taylor expand about the point x equals zero. We're going to Taylor expand about x equals zero. And this actually has a special name. If you Taylor expand about the point x equals zero, what is that called? That's right, it's called the Maclaurin series, okay? And I never remember how to spell Maclaurin's name, so it's Maclaurin. Good, that's a Maclaurin series. Okay, so we can essentially use, <coughs> excuse me, we can use the second formula. Um, it's kind of a little bit easier for this case. So we're expanding about the point A, which is zero, and we want f of x. Okay, so, so sine x is equal to f of zero 
is sine of zero is zero. Okay, zero plus df dx evaluated at zero. Well, what's the derivative of sine with respect to x? Cosine x. And what's cosine of zero? One. Okay, so this is plus one times x minus zero. So this is just x. Okay, what's the second derivative of sine with respect to x? So the first derivative was cosine, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine, and sine of zero, that's my base point, is zero. So plus zero. Okay, so the first term, second term, third term is zero. Uh, the fourth term is the third derivative of sine with respect to x evaluated at the point zero, which is minus cosine of zero is minus one. So this is minus one times. And now the next term is x cubed over three factorial plus dot, 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 dot. I could keep going on and on and on, okay? And if I write this out a little more simply, I see that it's equal to x minus x cubed over three factorial uh, plus x to the fifth over five factorial minus x to the seventh over seven factorial and dot, dot, dot. Okay, so this is what you get when you expand sine uh, in Taylor series about x equals zero. And you can kind of convince yourself um, that these are all of the terms that pop out. It's pretty simple. Okay, and then um, we're going to basically code this up in MATLAB. Okay, so I want to, uh, I'm going to say code up in MATLAB. Okay, but before I do that, I just want to tell you how this generalizes to vector valued functions. Okay, so, <clears throat> so let's say that now my, my vector x is a vector x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. And so my function f is also a vector valued function. So f is um, f1 of x, f2 of x, dot, 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 fn of x. OK, so now I can still tailor expand my function f about some vector point uh, x. And it looks basically just like uh, it would here, except now I have these pesky derivatives of a vector with respect to a vector. OK, so I just want to show you what that looks like. Um, so d f d x, when f is a vector valued function and x is a vector, <coughs> is equal to, let's see, it's equal to d f1 d x1. So the derivative of the first component of the function with respect to the first variable. Then it's d f1 d x2 dot 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 all the way to d f1 d x n. And then so on down the line. So now we have d f2 d x1. So the derivative of my second function with respect to my first variable. The derivative of the second function with respect to my first, uh, my second variable, and so on. And then all the way down until we get dfn for the last row. So dfn, dx1, df2, dx2, uh, df, sorry, dfn, n, dxn. Okay, and so I'm actually publishing these lecture notes online. So if you have, if you find it a little hard to read, uh, just follow on your own. This is pretty straightforward. Um, the way that I remember that it starts with uh, subscript ones for the f on top, and then f sub two, f sub three, dot dot dot, f sub n, and then the x's count across. So notice that um, the f index increases as I go down and the x index increases as I go to the right. And the way I think about this is that I'm going to be multiplying df dx by an x-shaped vector, 
right? So if I multiply this by something that's like x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 then I want my x's to be increasing in the same way. So this is how I always remember uh, the proper order of doing a, a multi-variable uh, derivative, okay? And you can just um, kind of work this out on your own. So a nice little example to make sure you understand this concept. Just try this with f1 equals uh, x squared plus y squared, and f2 equals 2x times y. Okay, so just so you understand uh, this concept, this is a pretty important concept, try it for this, um, for this function. First, just compute df dx, and then try to compute the first few terms of the Taylor series, okay? Okay, good, so now let's go to MATLAB and code up um, just to get a feeling for what this sine x Taylor series looks like, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, good, so let's go to MATLAB. Okay, uh, let's see, what do we want to do? So the first thing we're going to do is just plot our function so we can all see uh, that there's no funny business. Okay, so we're gonna clear all, um, gonna create a vector x equals minus 10 in increments of 0.01 to 10, and y equals sine of x, okay? And then I'm just going to plot x by y. Um, I'm gonna make it black, so k is the color black in MATLAB. And I'm going to use a line width of two so that you can all see it and then I'm just setting the axis. So you don't always need to add these last uh, lines, but it makes it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so what am I saving here? Let's just call this uh, Taylor series. And I'm running my code, and that's my sine wave. Okay, good, no funny business. Um, the grid on command shows me my grid. Okay, this is my sine wave. And the point in the middle here is the origin, zero, zero. <coughs> okay, so now we're just going to look at what the first, uh, the first and third and fifth order Taylor series expansions look like. So here is my first, um, maybe I should run this again, good. So my first uh, order Taylor expansion is just the polynomial x, right? We derived it on the board, you can, uh, convince yourself that it's just x. So p equals one zero is a polynomial for x plus zero. And my y t1, this is my Taylor series one, my first order Taylor series, y t1 is equal to polyval of my polynomial at all of my points x from minus 10 to 10. So I've defined a first order polynomial that is the first uh, term in my Taylor series and I'm evaluating that polynomial at all of my points x, and I'm gonna plot it, uh, x by y t1, and I'm gonna make this blue uh, with line width um, 1.2. Okay, let's run that, and now we see, very good. Okay, so this is our first order Taylor series approximation in blue. And actually, if you zoom in, right, right around the point zero that we're Taylor expanding about, <coughs> or Maclaurin expanding, if you like, this actually approximates it pretty well. But it does a very poor job when we move outside of that region. Okay, so let's try our next uh, Taylor series. Remember, all of the even terms were zero because uh, the second, you know, the zeroth derivative, the second derivative, and the fourth derivative of sine were just sine, um, negative sine, and positive sine, and evaluated at zero, those are all zero. So our Taylor series only has odd terms, x minus x cubed over three factorial. So this is my third order uh, Taylor expansion. And we're going to say, okay, now my polynomial is minus one over factorial three. This is a built-in factorial MATLAB command, zero, one, zero. And this is the polynomial uh, minus one over three factorial x cubed plus x. Same thing, I'm gonna say y t three equals polyval my p at all points x, and I'm gonna plot it. Um, 
And what color do I want? Uh, let's say I'll just make a red dashed line. Okay. Very good. Okay, so now this red line is uh, the third order Taylor series approximation. And notice that it actually does a pretty good job uh, for a, a slightly larger radius of convergence than the first order series. Okay. Let's do our fifth, fifth order. Okay, so now P equals uh, one over factorial five, zero, and then everything here is the same. Okay, and this is uh, one over five factorial times x to the fifth, plus all of the other stuff. Okay, and y t five is my polynomial, my polyval p at x, and I'm going to plot. Uh, what do I want to plot this one as? Uh, let's make it green. Okay, and notice that the green one is doing even better uh, still. That's good. So I could keep typing these in over and over and over again. I'm just going to uh, open up a file where I've actually already done this. Um, so now I'm including a seventh and a ninth order polynomial. And it killed my MATLAB. Okay, so you get the picture. Um, the Taylor series, the more terms I include, the better uh, the agreement is. And you know that, that makes sense, that's what we learned in calculus. But um, the expansion order is actually it doesn't scale that well, right? Like I had a fifth order polynomial and I only had a very narrow window where it worked. Okay, my MATLAB's back open. Let's try it one more time. Okay, I'm just gonna run this script one last time. Hope nothing bad happens. Good. <coughs> okay, so the blue line, the dark blue line is my first order polynomial. The red line is my third order. Green is fifth. Um, then magenta is seventh. And finally, this light blue cyan is the ninth order Taylor expansion. And it actually agrees for over an entire period of sign, which is great. Um, but I'd need a really, really high order polynomial to get farther out, okay? Um, and I guess a good rule of thumb is that you need two polynomial orders every time you want to make, uh, to capture a switchback in your function. Okay, and recall from the fast Fourier transform lectures um, that you know this is a great example of one of these functions that is not very well approximated by Taylor series, and maybe we should be using a Fourier series instead. Okay, so that's all of the MATLAB for now. Um, now I want to go back to the board. Okay, so this was kind of a big aside. Um, I just wanted to tell you what Taylor series are because we're going to be using them pretty heavily for the next three lectures. Um, but now let's get back to kind of the main point of today's lecture, numerical differentiation. This is, uh, I'm going to circle this because this is the, the major topic today. Maybe I won't star that. Um, okay, good. So just recall that what we're doing is we're approximating the derivative by using the definition of the derivative for a finite delta t. Okay? And I'm going to uh, Taylor expand f of t plus delta t. I get this. Um, <coughs> I'm also going to, uh, well, okay, let's call this the star equation. So I can define a forward difference approximation to the derivative. So my forward difference. Okay, forward difference is essentially just this formula that we're used to. So we have f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by delta t. Okay, so what does this equal? I have this expansion for f of t plus delta t, right? That's, this is star minus f of t divided by delta t, okay? So in this equation, First, I'm going to subtract f of t. So I, all I have left is the stuff on the right. And then I'm dividing by delta t. So my first term is just 
df dt. My second term is d squared f dt times delta t over 2, and so on, right? Because I'm dividing by delta t. So this equals df dt, which is what I want, right? I have subtract f of t, divide by delta t, I get a df dt, plus delta t over 2 d squared f dt squared plus dot, dot, dot. <coughs> okay? So this approximation, this finite difference approximation to my derivative is what I want, the exact derivative, plus error. Okay, this is what I want. And this is all of the error. Okay, so this expression gives me the derivative that I desire and a bunch of error, and that error is on the order of delta t. So if I make my delta t smaller, then this error becomes smaller, okay? So we're going to say error uh, is on the order of delta t. And in math lingo, right, we say uh, kind of fancy O delta t, right? I, I know it has some coefficients, 1 half d squared f dt, but I don't care what those are. I know that as long as I cut dt in half over and over and over, I'm going to essentially be cutting my error in half over and over and over. Okay, good. So this is uh, the first major definition of a derivative we have, the forward, uh, forward difference scheme. So does everyone follow what I did here? Um, I'm basically taking a Q from calculus, right? I know that if I make delta T small enough, I'm gonna get a pretty good derivative. And so I'm Taylor expanding my uh, F of T plus delta T just to see what the error looks like, right? I'm going to use this definition of a derivative, but I wanna know what the error looks like. And it's, you know, it's this term here, delta T over two times the second derivative. Okay, good. So that's the forward difference. Um, there's another scheme called the backward difference. Let's try this out. Okay, so the forward difference is, is one way of approximating it, um, but I could equally well do something called a backward difference. Um, and I'll kind of show you what that is in a minute. Um, the basic idea of the backward difference is instead of uh, looking at the limit as delta t goes to zero. Let me just draw it up on this uh, board here. So here we looked at the limit as delta t goes to zero of t plus delta t minus f of t, right? I have this point coming in from the right, getting closer and closer to my point. I could equally well have a point coming in from the left that gets closer and closer uh, to my point, and that would be f of t minus f of t minus delta t. So this is our backward uh, central difference scheme. Okay, so I'm gonna write this up on the board. We're gonna say uh, backward difference is f of t minus f of t minus delta t over delta t. If I take the limit as delta t goes to zero, this is exactly going to give me my derivative, right? It's just as good as the forward difference. We just usually like plus signs better than minus signs, but this really is uh, the, same, the same derivative, or at least in the limit, it will give you the same derivative. Um, to figure out the error properties of this, I need another Taylor expansion. I need to Taylor expand this term, f of t minus delta t. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to call this uh, double star. And double star is f of t minus delta t. And let's see if I can do this cold because I should be able to just write down the derivative, right? The Taylor expansion. So f of t, right, my base point is t, minus delta t times d squared, I'm sorry, df dt at t. Okay, now I'm gonna have plus 
uh, a minus delta t squared is a plus delta t squared, so plus delta t squared over two factorial times the second derivative of f with respect to t squared uh, minus delta t cubed over three factorial d cubed f d t cubed t plus dot 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 order delta t to the fourth. Okay. That's my Taylor expansion. So let's actually uh, plug that in here, right? We, that's how we figured out the error for forward difference. Let's plug in uh, this Taylor expansion into this expression here. Okay, so f minus this. Okay, f minus f is zero. Minus minus delta t times this is plus delta t times this. So I have a plus this term divided by delta t is just df dt evaluated at t. Then I have a minus this term divided by delta t is minus delta t over 2 d squared f dt squared uh, plus, you know, order delta t squared terms. We're just not going to compute the rest. But this is what we get when we take f minus double star equation divided by delta t. And again, this is what we want, right? We want this expression, and this is all of my error, which is on the order of, right? The, it's on the order of delta t. This first leading error term is on the order of delta t. Now, the reason I can neglect all of these higher order error terms is because they have higher powers of delta t, and I'm probably gonna be choosing delta t small. Right, let's say delta t is 0.01. So this leading error term is kind of order 0.01. And the delta t squared term is on the order of 0.0001. Much, much smaller, small enough I can neglect it. Okay, so this term is kind of the dominant leading error term. It's, you know, it's the stuff that we, we would rather not have these things. But because we're approximating our derivative, we have these error terms, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the backwards difference scheme. Okay, so we have two schemes. We have um, forward difference uh, here on the right board. Okay, forward difference. We essentially take the limit as delta t gets small from the right. And then we have backward difference, which is when we take a limit as delta t gets small from the left. Okay, that's all we're doing here. And both of them have this order delta t error. Okay. In a minute, we're gonna code this up uh, and actually see what these derivatives look like numerically on data or on a function. But I'm just gonna tell you one uh, final kind of better numerical derivative. And this is called the central difference. Okay, I had forward difference, f of t, no, sorry, f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by delta t. I had backward difference, um, Maybe I'll just write up the forward difference so they're all on the same board. The forward difference is uh, f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by delta t. This is my forward difference, my backward difference, and now I'm gonna write down something called the central difference. Any guesses on what the central difference is going to look like? just based on the clues of, of forward and backward difference? Well, so central difference is going to be, um, how do I wanna write this? So I wanna say that this is f of t plus delta t uh, minus f of t minus delta t divided by two delta t. Okay, so let's just go over to this right board real quick and think about this. So on this right board, uh, we have this picture of f of t. And what the central difference does is it actually picks two points straddling the point we care about. And it looks um, at the slope between those two lines. And I'm gonna show you right now that this is actually more accurate. 
Okay, so notice that this central difference is our star equation, right? We had a Taylor expansion for this, we called it star, minus our double star equation for the Taylor expansion of this. Okay, so I'm gonna plug those in. I'm just gonna say um, star minus double star is equal to, of course, f of t plus delta t minus uh, f of t minus delta t. And this equals, what does this equal? Okay, it equals two delta t. You can kind of work this out on paper or I'm putting my notes up. It's two delta t times df dt uh, plus two delta t cubed over three factorial times the third derivative. plus order delta t to the fifth. So this is really cool because, um, remember, the single star equation looked just like this, except all of these were pluses, plus, 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 plus. The double star equation is plus, minus, plus, minus, da, da, da. And so when I subtract the two, the only terms that remain are the ones that have different signs. So I get two of these and none of these, and I get two of these, Okay, which is why here I have only powers of delta t that are odd. Delta t to the one, delta t to the three, delta t to the five. Kind of cool, there's some uh, symmetry here. And now if I take this expression and divide by two delta t, what I get is df dt, which is what I want, right? This is the thing I'm trying to solve for, plus uh, delta t squared over three factorial d cubed f dt cubed plus dot dot dot. Okay, so again, this is my error term. But this is kind of cool. My error term now is order delta t squared. This is really good. So this is order delta t squared error, which is a very, very good thing indeed. So what, a, what this means is that in the first two examples, let's say my error was bad and I really need good error because I'm predicting, what am I trying to do? Um, maybe there's an asteroid hurtling towards Earth and I'm trying to compute its velocity, right? I'm trying to compute the derivative of its measured positions, but the error is just not, um, not very good. I have a big uncertainty and I wanna decrease my error. So typically what I would do is I would decrease delta t. Now in forward and backward difference, if I decrease my delta t by a factor of 10, my solution becomes 10 times more accurate. But the great thing about central difference and this order delta t squared error is that if I cut my delta t by a factor of 10, here my error gets better by a factor of 100. Okay, so this is a huge improvement over backwards and forwards difference. Let me say that one more time. In backward and forward difference, the best way to, to decrease my error is to make my delta t smaller. So if I cut my delta t in half, my error is cut in half. Whereas in central difference, if I cut my dt in half, I cut my error uh, by a factor of four. Okay, so this is very, very good. Okay, great. Um, so now I want to code some examples up in MATLAB so that you get a feeling for what this really means, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, good, so let's go back to the MATLAB screen. And I think I have just about uh, 10 minutes left, which is plenty of time to code this up. Okay, so new script. Okay, we're going to work this out on the sine wave example from before. So we're going to clear all, I'm gonna define a delta t equals 0.2. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Maybe I'll make my dt a little bit more modest, 0.1. t is gonna equal minus two uh, in increments of dt up to four. So I'm just going from minus two to four. Um, it's almost a full period of sine. And f is gonna equal sine of t. Okay, good, so I'm gonna save this. This is my um, finite difference b. And I'm gonna run it. Okay, so what I have is dt a big t vector, 
and a big f vector, okay, a big list of, of f values, sine at t. Now, this is kind of cool. Um, everything we've done on the board, we're kind of, it's unclear if these are functions or data or what, but here, at this point, t and f are data. I mean, we know, between us, we have this kind of secret knowledge that we're looking at a sine function, because we're using MATLAB's built-in sine function to generate this data. But for everything we're doing, you might as well consider that these are vectors that your boss emailed you, and he's saying, hey, take the finite difference derivative and tell me what the derivative is, okay? Maybe your boss is sending you positions of some object, and he wants the velocities back. Okay, so at this point, we can consider this just data. However, I am going to take advantage of the fact that I know the exact derivative, which is cosine. So df dt is equal to cos of t. This is just for comparison. We're just going to use this to see if we're getting close. Okay, um, first things first, I'm going to plot some stuff. Um, I'm going to plot uh, my function in a uh, black dash <coughs> with a line width of 1.2. I'm going to hold on and put a grid on, and I'm going to plot my derivative, t and df dt in a uh, solid black line with a line width of 3. So the thing I want is the derivative, so that's going to be a bigger, uh, thicker plot. And I'm going to put a legend so I know what I'm looking at, that this is my function, and this is my exact derivative. And uh, I'm just going to put the font size larger so that you can see what I'm looking at. So if you ever write up technical reports based on your MATLAB, you're going to become very good uh, at being kind of OCD about all of these commands. Okay, so let's run this code. Um, there's my plot, and this is basically what I expect, right? Sine wave, here is the origin, zero, zero. I have sine wave, and then I have cosine wave, the exact derivative, okay? Now we're gonna compute our finite difference approximations, okay? So this is a new kind of part of the script. This is my forward uh, difference approximation. That's df dt, and I'm going to call that capital F for forward, is, what is this? Um, okay, I'm going to do this and say sine of t plus dt minus sine of t divided by dt, right? That's I'm taking sine of my vector plus dt minus sine of my vector at t divided by delta t. Uh, I'm also going to do my backward uh, difference approximation is dt, df dt backwards equals uh, sine of t minus sine of t minus dt divided by dt. And then my central uh, difference is df dt central is sine of t plus dt minus sine of t minus dt divided by uh, 2dt. Good, that looks right. And now I'm just going to plot these things. Um, I'm going to plot t by df dt forward difference in blue. OK, that's blue. Uh, let's put a label. This is forward diff. Uh, then I'm going to plot my backward difference in green. and my central difference in red. And I'm just going to update my legend uh, to tell me what my new functions are. So this is uh, forward, backward, and central. Good. OK, so now if I run this, what do I get? Okay, very good. So we see that all of our derivative approximations are actually pretty good, right? They're pretty close, um, <coughs> pretty close to the exact derivative that I want them to be. Um, and if I zoom in a little bit, what do we see? Um, make this bigger. 
So we actually see that the blue curve is kind of systematically over predicting uh, when there's a positive slope, and the green curve is systematically under predicting. Sorry, these legends got messed up. Uh, let me try one more time. There we go. These legends are correct. Okay. So um, let's just go back here. So we see that when the positive slope, the forward difference systematically over predicts, the backward difference systematically under predicts, and the central difference is right on the money. Very, very accurate, um, very small errors. Similarly, when there's a negative slope, now this is the opposite, right? So now this backward difference goes from under predicting to over predicting, and the forward difference goes from over predicting to under predicting. Okay? And this is really just a property of the fact, like this geometric picture of um, finite difference derivatives, right? Like you can kind of convince yourself that this should be true. Um, let's make our dt a little bit bigger, a little bit worse dt, 0.2. It's going to rerun the exact code. Now you see that the errors um, in forward and backward difference are more significant, but central difference is still doing really, really well. So this is just kind of telling you that um, really if you can get away with doing central difference, it's much better. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, and you can kind of play with this code. One thing you might want to try to do is instead of actually using sine of t in these definitions of the derivative, try to just use the data f and the data t. This will be kind of an interesting uh, exercise. And we're going to work through this in the next lecture. OK. Um, Let's see, is there anything else? <coughs> well, OK, I think that that's it for now. Um, in the next lecture, what we're going to do is look at the second derivative. Um, we're going to look at how to compute these derivatives just from data. Um, and then either in the next lecture or in the following one, we're going to start talking about numerical integration of functions and data as well. OK, thank you, uh, and I'll see you next time.